This is the Watchman giving a clarion call. And today I wanted to return my focus to my old weapon of choice against the banking cabal, silver. <laughs> 2015 has been a banner year for silver demand, a banner year. And we're going to take a look at that, but we're also going to do so in light of supply and what the bankers might do next on the price scene. But first, though, before we do all that, let's focus our attention on a piece that my buddy uh, Small Gould sent me yesterday. This piece appeared in CPI Financial, and it was brand spanking fresh uh, news in a report put out by the Interim Silver Market Review, uh, sponsored by anti-silver news outlet Reuters. Now, keep that in mind. That's, that's crucial. Because if this data is what Reuters, a Rothschild publication, is willing to admit about silver, then the true numbers could possibly be uh, even worse. This is just what they're comfortable admitting to the stacking community at large. There's some fantastic info squibs in here, uh, so let's just jump right in and get started with some. Uh, firstly, what about supply? Now, I've been pounding the table all year saying that overall supply was going to wane again, putting even more stress on the just-in-time delivery system. And were we right about that? <laughs> well, give a listen to this enlightening quote from the article. Uh, quote, Total silver supply is forecast to fall to 1,014,014,000 uh, 1, ounces in 2015, down 3% from the previous year. This decline is expected to be driven by flat mine production, a 5% drop in scrap return, and net de-hedging of 12.6 million ounces. Mine production is slated to total 867 million ounces this year, up 0.3% from a year ago. This would be the weakest performance since 2002 when mine production fell by 2%. Healthy increases in primary silver mine production, particularly in Mexico, were partially offset by losses in silver output from base metal mines. Okay. Scrap supply is expected to fall for the fourth consecutive year, continuing a downtrend that began after annual average prices and scrap levels peaked in 2011. End quote. <laughs> okay, bingo, brothers. We were right again. Now, let's focus on that paragraph for a bit and break it down. I've, I've been saying that the plummeting base metal prices would weigh heavily on base metal supply and thereby silver supply, and I was right. And it, it's just beginning, too. Most base metals uh, mines haven't even begun to really mothball their mines at all. Okay, next we have scrap supply in that paragraph, um, showing another unsurprising drop in this report. The scrap supply will can uh, drop another 10 million ounces from the level it was in 2014. Okay, the scrap supply has evaporated over the past five years, and until prices come back significantly uh, higher, m maybe even a doubling from where we are right now, at least, scrap supply will remain subdued. Now, total silver supply will be down 3%, or about 42 million ounces uh, in 2015. Now, that's before the add-ins back from uh, ETF outflows. But that's a significant decline, especially when you consider what they admit to next. Quote, Silver bullion coin sales reached a fresh record high in the third quarter of this year, totaling 32.9 million ounces and are up 95% year on year, according to GF, GFMS's uh, bullion coin survey. The slide in silver prices in July and August to six year lows triggered a surge in buying in the silver coin market particularly in North America, where coin sales increased by 103% to a total of 23.6 million ounces in the third quarter. 
This largely unexpected surge resulted in an unprecedented shortage of current year silver bullion coins among the world's largest sovereign mints. Silver coin demand is forecast to increase 21% in 2015 to a total record high of 129.9 million ounces. Coin demand should account for 12% of physical demand this year, up from 10% in 2014 and just 4% 10 years ago, end quote. Okay, wow. <laughs> that is unprecedented, brothers. Demand resulting from that slide in price, oh, that is excellent. That is, that is filet mignon right there. <laughs> Third quarter coin demand of 33 million ounces being 95% higher than third, the third quarter of 2014 is remarkably impressive. Now, furthermore, when you consider that a 21% increase in coin demand in 2015 is a larger in percentage increase in demand than silver's percentage decrease in price, which they say was 18% lower. So this is key. Our demand is increasing at an even greater rate than the price is falling. Truly, truly impressive. But catch this next unexpected twist from the solar industry. Quote, silver demand from the photovoltaics industry is forecast to increase by 17% to a total 74.2 million ounces this year, just shy of the record 75.8 million in 2011. Solar will make up 13% of total industrial demand, up from 11% last year, and just 1% a decade ago. <laughs> That's an amazing figure, too. Nearly 75 million ounces in 2015 used for the solar industry. The many hadn't expected this, even, even the commentators in our circles. I wasn't sure what would happen myself. So you've got record bullion demand and record solar demand going on at this time, and that is putting a serious pinch on global supplies. Now, it's true that in the same update, they reported a minor decrease uh, in the jewelry sector and the electronics sector, very slight. But the, the same forces elsewhere, uh, the, uh, it, it, it was um, not really important because they've still resulted in an overall negative net silver balance of over an estimated 21 million ounces, and that will likely be revised higher at a later time, like they did last year. Okay, Watchman, I get it. Another silver deficit. whoop de doo Pri Price is still caving in as we speak. Falling supply and silver deficits don't seem to matter. <laughs> Oh, they do, friend, and, and they will. Let me show you an unbelievable new chart. Steve St. Angelo put out a great piece on this report just yesterday, and it really put the whole thing into perspective. This chart shows clearly that even though they've been able to ramp up supply for the last 12 years, it didn't stem the tide. It didn't put a dent in silver's deficit, nor did it stop our stacking from increasing. The only thing it did was make their price rigging game possible for a few more years. Now, how much silver did the banks burn through in the last 12 years since the bull market began? Well, it's astonishing, and Steve lays it out for us in exquisite detail, brothers. Over 1 billion ounces of silver was burned through since 2004, 1 billion, 21 million to be exact, including this year. And Steve also says that he believes a lot of this 1 billion ounces came from the, quote, unreported above ground stocks, end quote. That's a number that's hard to put our figure on since the way they've reported it in the past has been unbelievably shady. It is very sketchy. Um, they, they, they constantly tweak their reporting of that figure and, and, and the accounting that they, do, that they use to do that. But I bring this report out now in light of the heavy price hammering that gold and silver could soon be in for. If 
the banksters do this, and I believe it's highly likely they could take silver under 14. Uh, remember these numbers. One billion ounces of silver gone in a decade. Tens of millions of ounces more eaten away in 2015 with perhaps more to come. <laughs> I'm still cheering for lower silver prices. I want sub-14 silver. I hope they have the gonads to take it there. I would be most happy with sub-$12 silver, in fact. Now, how long do you honestly think that would last? Ask yourself. Remember this. When they took silver under 16 and hard during the summer, the COMEX bled 40% of its registered silver in six months. 40%. Now, how much do you think they'd lose if it goes to the, say, the 12s? People, <laughs> a 1 billion ounces of silver has slipped away from them since this bull market began. Write that figure down. Commit it to memory because it will give you ironclad assurance that these crimes they're pulling will not continue forever. The brothers know this right now. The banksters could bring down the hammer on silver prices any minute because they're already doing it on gold under 1080 as I predicted on November 5th. Silver and gold, it's true, are highly oversold right now and they could experience a bounce, but I don't know if they'll allow it. But if they take prices down and hammer them, remember this, if they bring down the hammer on silver's price, you be ready for it, mentally ready, emotionally ready. Prepare yourself, even financially if you can. If at all possible, don't stand there and take their charge. You charge them right back. You make them pay for it in ounces because that's the blood this beast needs the most. I want the rigging to be annihilated. And the only way we do that is to charge into hell's gates as the bullets are flying. And I have a suspicion that more bullets are going to fly before they lose their grip, before we rout them and destroy them. And that is just fine by me. Now, lower silver prices, brothers, via this price rigging, that might appear to be the enemy's strongest weapon. But I promise you, it's actually our greatest ally. If they bring the hammer down on silver now, you bring the hammer down on them. And let your battle cry be, one billion ounces. <laughs> This is the Watchman signing off. Stay vigilant and bring the fight to them.